Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us. We sincerely apologize for beginning a little bit late. It was due to unforeseen circumstances beyond our control. But however, we're here and any time that we meet is a good morning to us and we pray that the day will be very, very beautiful. Um, there are a lot of things that are going to, to happen today. Today we'll start the hearing of uh, the case, uh, the case in the Supreme Court uh, instituted by uh, the PDP and its presidential candidate uh, against the APC. We also are going to, we're going to be praying that the, the UK court will rule in favor of Nigeria because uh, the PR, P and ID case, or if I'm not mistaken, is going to be decided today. And everybody is praying that it should be in Nigeria's favor because. $11 billion is money that we don't have in Nigeria right now. So no matter what uh, divide you are in Nigeria, uh, we should pray. We say we are a praying country. This is the time to actually pray because it's out of our control. We hope that that judgment will be such that it will favor Nigeria. But if it doesn't favor Nigeria, it will be such that uh, it will not further sink us deeper and deeper into despair, uh, more than we are already facing now. What we're going to be doing basically today is to review the papers because there are so many things in the papers that we need to just look at and uh, talk about, uh, whether we have a guest that will be talking with us or not. But it's good for us to just see what the headlines are, what are the things that made it to the front pages of the headlines. By the way, my name is Nyam Gul. Gaiji, and I'm wishing you a very pleasant day um, with us. It's a Monday, and a lot of people do not like Mondays. And if you are one of those who do, does not like Monday, or the people that do not like Monday, you are one of them, know that it's possible that you don't, do not like your job. Because if you like your job, you'll be looking forward to um, the opportunity to do that job. Maybe it's time for you to change jobs so that you'll be looking forward to it. Monday should be an exciting day for you, not a day of gloom because you're thinking that you're going back to work. I mean, if there's something you really love, like the Bible says, um, where your treasure lies, there your heart lies. So if you really are in love with your job, wouldn't you be thinking about it all the time and hoping that you go get uh, the opportunity to work at it? So just something to just munch on <laughs> this morning. Maybe you are in the wrong place because no matter what, it's the love and the passion for what you do that keeps you at times or in the times of uh, adversity. Anyway, let's go to the papers now and see what the papers are saying. Let's begin with... Um, the Punch newspaper on of the press this morning. Punch newspaper will be our first port of call as we begin. Mm -hmm. Federal government plans 26 mm -hmm. trillion naira borrowing, 29 trillion naira for debt surfacing. So federal government that promised us that uh, we may never see them borrowing anymore has said that they are going to uh, borrow 26 trillion naira and then 29 trillion is for debt servicing. Okay, the riders on that story uh, that um, debt servicing to exceed capital budget spending by 7.69 trillion naira amid slow economy, and also high debt servicing costs creating potential fiscal risks, government laments. Also on the punch, if you go to the top left corner, you will see Naira slums further exchanges at 1,190 Naira per dollar. And that is being very moderate because in some quarters it's being um, exchanged for far, far higher than that, about 1,200 Naira to a dollar. Fuel hits 685 Naira per liter in the north. Uh, well, in, not only in the north, in some places, even in the south, fuel has hit that much. And then there are places that do not have filling stations or, uh, yeah, filling stations. And uh, they, they depend on what we call black market. And in the black market is already 1,500 Naira in so many places that we know about. Assassination is also on the Punch newspaper. Assassination, please probe alleged attempt on Bello. Uh, the story was carried that uh, the governor of Kogi State um, uh, escaped an assassination attempt. 
the police is on the lookout for these people. And if the police wants to do their job, I'm sure that they're going to get these people uh, that did this. We are very happy. Um, I'd like to applaud the police, uh, uh, police force for what they did in Benway State. There, were, there was a, an armed robbery in Benway State where some police officers were killed and some other innocent people were killed. Multiple robberies. Now they have caught at least four people that were involved in that robbery incident and we hope that they are going to nab the rest of the people and bring them to justice. We also have five die, 15 injured in Lagos Ibadan Expressway crash. Uh, there was that accident yesterday on uh, Kara Bridge and the, you can see the bus there was mangled. There was a container that uh, fell, maybe f it fell on top of the bus or something and it led to the death of uh, five people and there was also massive traffic on, until you get to Kara. Uh, once you pass Kara, it was free uh, to Ibadan. So APC PDP hopeful as Supreme Court battle starts today. That's also there. So we're going to hear what the Supreme Court is going to, to say. And we'll know how uh, it's going to possibly end from what we're going to hear today. Friends mourn Nigeria medical student killed in Philippines, and then Israel Hamas, Biden, Pope, protesters want ceasefire. That is all from the Punch newspaper. Uh, we are moving from the Punch newspaper to uh, the Daily Independent newspaper. Daily Independent is our next port of call this morning. Maybe we'll skip Daily Independent and go to the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with um, at 1,200 naira to a dollar, 985 naira per liter fuel spike squeezes air travel pricing. Okay, that is on page six of the Guardian newspaper. Then. Um, Then we also have WK clarifies uh, meeting with Israeli envoy as Pandev INC knock Gumi. Answers Farano asks ministers to review plan on 500, naira, 500 million naira fine for convict, conf, convicts. Rather. We think palliative step up productive engagement. That is an editorial on The Guardian. You can see that on page 12. And then Coalition resort to protest lawsuits to stop purchase of 57 billion naira SUVs for lawmakers. Supreme Court justices down by one as Musa Datijo bows out. Okay, uh, tourists attack customs house, kill officer in Yobe, and Atikus aid tackles Tinubu over forgery allegations. Those are uh, the headlines on the Guardian newspaper. We are being joined by um, Mr. Opunabo in Kotaria, uh, who is our analyst for today. Good morning and welcome to the program, Opunabo. Uh, please unmute yourself. We can't, I can't seem to hear you. Okay, while we wait to get the audio from Opunabo, we're just continuing. Um, uh, from, the, from the Guardian newspaper, we're moving to the next uh, newspaper, the Nation newspaper, uh, hopefully. The Nation newspaper leads with uh, Tinubu's homegrown plan, Good to Revive Economy. That is according to Edu, the Minister of Economy. Uh, the, the, the headline is States owe pensioners NITR accounts void, void Senate minority leaders victory. And um, then we have Edun Tinubu's homegrown 
uh, plan good to revive economy. The rider is there's no likelihood of Nigeria seeking international assistance on debt restructuring. Can Opinabo hear me now? Good morning, Opinabo. Can you hear me? Okay. Welcome to the program. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Yeah. Interesting headlines this morning. Uh, we'll be taking some of the ones that the papers are available to us now and sometimes maybe delve into some other papers that may not be here, but headlines that we've seen uh, have made it to the front pages of some newspapers. Let's begin with uh, the Punch newspaper, Ipunabo. Federal government plans 26 trillion naira borrowing and 29 trillion naira for debt servicing. Let's begin with that. I'm so sorry, but my earpiece is giving me problems. 26 million naira borrowing and 29 trillion for debt servicing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an endless circle. It's a shame that most times in Nigeria we borrow for the worst reasons. You borrow to purchase cars for National Assembly members. You borrow to do all kinds of, or for all kinds of frivolities. You don't really borrow. Look at how much was borrowed from even China to do our railroads, uh, road tracks, and so on. We are finding it very difficult to pay. You borrow to fly your aids around the world. You borrow to pay salaries. You have how many ministers, how many aids, and what have you. And you're borrowing. Does that make sense? This is when you told Nigerians to tighten their belt. And your belt is fast loose. It's not tightened at all. Look at how much we spend every month and every year to service debts. That's debt servicing. So even if you talk of, and this is a country that is producing nothing, that ought to be producing much in terms of oil, and other natural resources. We are producing nothing in this country, yet we are borrowing. How do we pay? They don't mean? think of how to pay, they don't think of how to generate force, they don't think of how to generate employment, they don't think of how to generate, uh, how to uh, establish industries. They are just concerned about borrowing. Mm. And now if you ask the question, why are you borrowing? You are borrowing to buy cars. Very expensive cars. When you can just go to in here to purchase cars. You're going to pay salaries. Meanwhile, the mandatory requirement in terms of requirement should be 36 states plus one FCT, 37. You don't even need meaning the state ministers, ministers of states now. You don't need them anymore. You know why you have your minister for states, you have your forty something ministers, you have your advisors, you have the assistants, you, and you're going to pay all these persons from the money you are borrowing. So how do you pay back? Because it's not into anything productive. Hmm. Not into anything productive. You are not even going to uh, set up a turn around our refineries. That's not what you're doing. Okay. You're not even going to ensure that we are next other natural resources. That's not what you're doing. You're borrowing to travel to different countries and also pay salaries with your aids. You're traveling with your aids and you're also paying them salaries. And most of these appointments are completely unnecessary. And right now, uh, officially we've heard that the Naira is, well, uh, in the black market is up to 1,190. In fact, some papers are carrying 1,200 Naira to a dollar. And I don't know how we can place that uh, side by side with uh, these borrowings and how we intend to survive. It will, it will have not even started. It will be soon, soon it will be 2,000 naira to a dollar. Very soon. At the rate that you are You know, the last time we were there, I referred to our policies as, uh, our system as uh, political subambulism. Hmm. You sleep, we are sleepwalking. We don't really know. We are at sea. We don't really know what to do. 
were quandary as to what steps to take. And what has festered that situation is, while the nation is bleeding, our leaders are busy enjoying themselves, not minding what is going on. You know, we practice socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. Mm. That is the system of government we have in this country. Not necessarily democracy. I tell people, I say, if you talk of, you are condemning lambasting other African countries that are involved in coups. I say, what is the difference? If I say I want Mr. A as my president and Mr. B Regis as my president, contrary to the expression of the will of the people, is that not a coup? That's a coup. We have not even started. Uh, we have still need to be 5,000 now. Look at the uh, Cameroon, uh, the Frank, uh, someone was telling me, uh, the Cameroon money has more value than our Nigerian money currency. Hmm. Is that not a shame? Ghana is offered to give us gas, light. Is that not a shame? And yet you say you are the giant of Africa. Hmm. Giant of what? Giant of thuggery. Giant of robbery. Giant of intimidation. Giant of victimization. Giant of worse leadership. You can't be the giant of Africa. You can't be the giant of Africa. You're a disgrace to the African nation. The headlines also carry that fuel has hit 685 naira per litre in the north. And I was just saying that uh, it's not only in the north, even some parts of uh, the south, it has hit that high. And in some places that they depend solely on the black marketers, they are already buying at 1,500 and in some places 2,000 naira per litre. So I don't know. How much? One uh, six hundred and eighty-five naira per liter in the north. Fuel. You mean the fuel? Yes. You are asking why is it that high? No, no. I'm saying that fuel. Even when they are trying to borrow money, and the the dollar is now one hundred or one thousand two hundred, fuel has hit six hundred and eighty-five naira per liter in the north. Oh, we are approaching apocalyptic dimension. You see, we're in the rudderless states. We, and I said earlier, we're in a state of, we're in quandary. We don't really know where we're going to. It's, it's a complicated situation, occasioned by cataclysmic leadership. Leadership that does not really understand what the country needs. Why won't the price of fuel go up? You see, First and foremost, the federal government is not subsidizing. Mm. But there's a lot of arguments that the federal government is even subsidizing. And if the federal government is subsidizing, then Mr. President rescinded. Why would you come out to tell Nigerians that, oh, well, I'm very sorry for that policy. We have to subsidize, given the situation, pending when the situation improves. Mm. Well, the price of fuel will go up. Let's look at the indices. What is the landing cost? The landing cost is about 700 or 800. That's the landing cost. We're not even talking about the profit. They don't have forex. So we are going back to NNPC being the sole importer of petrol. Most of them are complaining they don't have forex. They import the fuel. And when you have all these challenges, what do you expect? Some that will come in will increase their price. Uh, because that is the only way of making a, a, a profit. And if you also consider, just, even if you have to like, make not abnormal profit, normal profit, when you consider the landing cost, which is about 800 naira now, in fact, you consider the uh, forex, you consider, I mean, you give it, take it or leave it. Those that are important will have to make some money from it. Mm. It's their business. Yeah. It all boils down to our naira and our inability to be a productive country or deliberate inability to be a very refusal to be a productive country. Mm. If we had a refineries working, we wouldn't be having all these problems. Why have they refused to feed the refineries? And yet we pay every year for turnaround maintenance. 
Is that not ridiculous? And you say you know the cabal, yet not one has been named shamed, not one has been prosecuted. Every day you say you know the cabal. Is that not in, in some level of insanity? It's some level of insanity. You see an armed robber stealing from your building. You say you know the armed robber. What you are going to do, rather than deal with the armed robber, ensure that he's being punished for his crime, you say lock up that building. And, and we hear that the UK court is going to rule today on uh, the, the case, is it a PI and TD or something, that uh, we're owing $11 billion. Uh, dollars and the ruling is going to be today we don't know where it is going to go whether it's going to be in favor of nigeria or it's going to be against nigeria in the long run. i just i just pray i just pray it's going to be in favor because i we cannot even afford to pay that we don't even have the money to pay that hmm. i think it's a judgment of the supreme court that that's final you can't go to any other courts to seek redress and people are just asking, why, why, how did we even get here in the first place? Because of some shitty deals. Some persons are trying to be smart. And we are trying to make money from that deal. Hmm. As all kinds of agreements we are reached, not knowing that there will be a backlash. You know, in Nigeria, everything goes. Hmm. In this country, everything goes. Okay. The only time you are penalized for something is when you're against the government or when the new government is not your friend. Mm. Otherwise, any community with impunity, with impunity. So somebody thought he was going to make some good money from it, it was one great betrayal. going to make some good money from it and it backfired, that's all, mm. that's all. Interesting. So today is also a very important day, apart from uh, the UK ruling that we are, we are praying should be in our favor. We also have the APC PDP hopeful as Supreme Court battle starts today. Well, this, the matter is, is going to be subject as if we really get them into the nitty gritty. Uh, I am just worried, really worried, because uh, the, main, the main issue is the issue of certificates. And when people come up in defense, I get the, I get I get really angry. I get really infuriated. I got you. We're on air. If I ask you the school you went to, it's easy for you to mention. Mm. I realize that you never attended a secondary school was sat at home for his Cambridge and eventually became a chartered accountant. It happens. If I ask you now, Agadu, what year were you born? I don't think there will be any controversy. There is no way, Agadu, you're going to have five dates of birth. Of birth. I don't think so. I don't think you forget your second school to tell me one was in the pattern. And when somebody comes out to say, no, there is, you are not in the party, say it was in Lagos. I don't think you come up with such, such ridiculous excuses, statements, and arguments. Now, the, okay, you went to social school. No problem. But you did not get the Wayek to enter the school, which is a pre-qualification. How did, let us even leave the university. How did you get admission into that school? How? Because you didn't pass. The schools you claimed you attended, it is now obvious that they were established four years after you claimed you attended the for the school. That was when they were established. Let us leave the So let us go into those issues. Is, is it? I listened to somebody on the sister station today. Uh, why didn't they raise this issue before now? Why is why are they raising that? So, some ridiculous arguments. So, are you telling me? Okay, what are they even Why didn't they? Why did? Why? Why did they remove him after he was sworn in as uh, senior president? They would have also left him. They would have left Shalisu Buhari. 
They don't, they, nobody would have come up to say, uh, uh, no, 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 let's, let's, let's remove him. They would have just said, no, he has been sworn in and let him go. But up to recently, the House of Red member who are just uh, elected, yeah. they caught threw him out for certificate forgery. So when people come up to say, look, look, time, crime is not time bad to start with. And those, the, the, the drafters of the law know the importance and the significance of a crime. And that's why it is not time bad. Let, let's understand something. Um, in law, because you are um, part of the system as well, in law, um, what comes first? Is it technicality or the merits of the case? Because we've seen situations so where... Technicality, technicality is just a subterfuge to, uh, for justice miscarriage. And that is why the likes of Okuta who said, don't dwell on technicalities. Dwell on the merits of the case. And they said, Okuta and and that was what they did. You know, technicality, for example, now you say, pre-election matters. Everything concerning qualification should be pre-election matters. Then, after the election, a finding, you go to realize that, take say, they say you must be uh, 20 years and above to contest for an election. Meanwhile, these are issues that must be settled before the election. Once the person makes as a candidate, that person is qualified. You can't raise the issue of age anymore. I'm just giving an example. Mm. Then, the man lies, is qualified or presumably qualified for that election because of the credentials he presented. Only to find out that he lied. That is after being qualified, after being elected as a candidate of that party. And the judge tells you because he's corrupt. And that is pure electoral matter. Do you understand it now? Yeah. Because he's corrupt, that is pure election matter. Technicality, not the merits of the case. Hmm. Is that not miscarriage of justice? And because we see so many instances where you and find you find a case you find a clear cut case but we are not lawyers we will not understand we find a clear cut case and they just dismiss the, the case because of that's what, I'm that's what I'm telling you and a lot of them forget what you call judicial activism that is where you have the likes of Lord Denin and Co the likes of, of Basaki you have the likes of uh, Oputa and Co and Niagoro Yes, we agree. This is the, because what the law, what the court says, the law is is what the law is. Yes, we agree. This is this. This is this. But no. After all, we are talking about the issue. Now, these issues we are talking about today, we are created by same human beings. Can't we change it? Why do you have equity? Equity is meant to palliate the asperities of the law. That's the whole essence of equity. Okay. This is the law. But somebody came up to say, yes, this is the law. We agree. But let us also look at it this way. Mm. That's how it, that's, that's the genesis of it. Now, the Supreme so, Court justices are down by one The Supreme man. Court today can, this, whatever the Supreme Court says is what the law is. And if you have upright judges, they will base their judgments on merits. Because look at, at the example I gave to you. Let us assume that the man is now, they say 20, the man is 18. You say that is pre-election. You had 31 days or 48 days to deal with pre-election matters. You failed to so do. Therefore, the man is qualified. So automatically you're saying it's a transgression of the provisions of our constitution it's a transgression of the electoral provisions or electoral acts, and you have now started a new policy of a TDS can contest. Mm. Mm. How, how can you run a country like that? And the judge will now base his, his, his argument on 
the law, pre-election matters. To an extent, it's right to, because the law says pre-election matters after 70 days, after 40 days, after 30 days. So why did you not file within that time? These are technicalities. But if you're talking about the merit, yes, we agree, these are pre-election matters. This is a court. It's supposed to be a court of justice. My dear, to start it, you are not qualified. You should even be charged for perjury because you lied. Because you deposed your affidavit to support your documents. So you should even be charged for perjury. I'll tell you the nation will sit up. Mm. But when they now come to say these are pre-election matters, forget it. These are these are forget it. You, you're encouraging, you're watering a farm of corruption. That's what you're doing. You're watering the, the whole farm of corruption. So you are hopeful that this this this, this judgment will be based on merits rather than technicalities. Is that judgment right? should be based on merits and not for and not technicalities. I'm not the one who first said. I'll put out. I'm mentioning names mm. who said they don't believe in technicalities. Mm. Anyway, it should be based on right now the Supreme Court is down by one man because uh, Musa uh, Batijo has bowed out. Just in time. Mm. Did he resign or retire? I no, think he retired. I can't even fathom why you have death of judges. Well, I mean that. I mean D E A R T H of judges, justices on the Supreme Court. There should be succession plan. Hmm. What is the MJC doing? There should be succession plan. But will it affect whatever whatever I proceedings? All cases will go to the Supreme Court. Will this affect the the proceedings at the Supreme Court? Sorry? Will this um, retirement or bowing out of Justice Musa affect whatever is supposed to happen at the Supreme Court? That is what I am telling you. First and foremost, I cannot fight on it. You know, uh, their records are there. We all know when they are going to be retired. What is the NDC doing long before that time? You pencil down certain persons. When they go, maximum one, two months, they are replaced. Meanwhile, when they retire, you wait for two years before you start talking of other justice. To, I mean, it doesn't make sense. But that is the system in which you operate. And more so, I don't also appreciate the fact that all cases will get to the Supreme Court. It's wrong. Not all. What, what is governorship election you get into the Supreme Court? What is House of Prep election you get into? It's not necessary. You know, initially, well, there was once when the governorship election stops at the Court of Appeal. Then it was changed. Mm. Why? If you talk about the presidency, we agree. Just like you have the Court of First Exercise, the appeal, Court of Appeal, then the uh, Supreme Court. We agree, I'm very happy with that. But not to come and tell me the, pres the presidential uh, contest should start, election tribunal should start from high court or federal high court. It doesn't make sense. Not all cases must get to the Supreme Court. Land matter, Supreme Court. TJC matter, TJC matter, Supreme Court. How many kings do we have in this country? How many land? Look at the land mass. Everything is Supreme Court. Certain things should be handled by the Custom High Court of Appeal and let it end there. Everything Supreme Court, some of them will die. Some of them, when by the time they retire, not too long, they die. Mm. Most of them are weak, even on the bench. Not all cases must get to Supreme Court. Then when we talk of replacement, another problem. It takes one year, two years. Remember, these other ones have been over labeled. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Okay. Um, we, leave, we leave the politics and the courts uh, alone for, for now, but uh, something a little bit related. Answers, Falano asked Minister to review plan on 500 million Naira fine for convicts. Convicts of? Answers. Yes. I'm not seeing of that fact, so I, I'm not... I'm not who are the court? Excuse me. Let's the let, end, let's the take protesters or those those who manhandle the protesters and such. Whoever has been convicted as a result of NSAS are being asked to okay. pay five hundred yes, million yes. naira fine. Yes. What is there? Final answer is too much. They should review the plan on the five hundred million naira fine. Yes. Mm. To review the plan.
But there's there is this review of course or downwards. <laughs> No, no, no. Is it saying the fine is too small or is too much? That's what I mean. Okay. We, we need to get the details of that story. Uh, yeah, we'll get the details. Okay. So, coalition resorts to protest lawsuit to stop purchase of 57 billion Naira SUVs for lawmakers. Yeah, was it all that I just talked about? We are talking of fuel increase. We are talking of economic hardship. We are talking of a nation that is thrombosing. Yet we are having a, a callous National Assembly buying cars for themselves. The last time we had when Akwabi, Akwabi, I must be honest with you, is 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 I'm ashamed of Akwabi. Akwabi, Akwabi is a disgrace. Why would you say that? I got the point that the first time was the issue of up your mic, and the second time was running to the villa. To get clearance to with uh, Tinubu to clear uh, what's his name again, Francis Kayamu. I'm highly disappointed. Then the third time was asleep. When he said uh, they were going to be giving money, and the next time he said prayers sent to their email. <laughs> I mean, this, that's, that's the kind of system we have. The days of Okadi Banko are gone. You don't have them anymore. The days of uh, Kenny Manami and Co. who stopped the third term and gone. Today the third term bill would have passed. They would have passed if it would have been passed. That's the truth. Because of the kind of Senate president and senators we have there. Now you want to purchase cars for yourself. Completely disregarding the hardship that Nigerians are going through. What happened to the cars at Innocent? Now, how do we even encourage the economy to grow? Why won't you patronize companies like Innocent? But you are going to borrow trillions. People are dying of starvation. People cannot afford to even maintain families. And you're spending billions on cars, luxurious vehicles. How do you explain that to, to the ordinary Nigerian? How do you even explain that to your driver who cannot afford to feed his family, who is driving you in a 200 million naira, 400 million naira, 50 million naira, 80 million naira van? How? That's why the kidnappings are all over now. Because even that same driver is not happy, so he can plot. That's why you have all these problems all over. How do you explain to the driver? Okay. It's so sad. It the people sad. are so insensitive. Carlos is insensitive. And they come up with insidious policies. That's what is happening in this country. I wish they had Why spent have all that money minister? inside Nigeria okay, anyway. Mm. What are you going to do with them? Almost 50 ministers. How many aides? Always travel. travel. What has come out of the travel? How many times have the uh, American president of the British Prime Minister. How many times have they traveled? How many times have they left their countries? They've been in this world of technology. How many times? You are going to the airport, the whole uh, executive council, the whole uh, uh, military service chief, the whole uh, SAs and PAs will join you to the airport. What kind of a primitive life is this? What kind of place? The last time he saw the presidential jet. You can watch something. In America, even during the election, the president has to pay to use the presidential jet. But that's subsidized rate. That is his own presidential jet. But he has to pay. They say that is the private thing. I'm subsidized. Yes, they don't mind subsidizing, but something must be paid. That's a civilized client. Yeah, the son. Is flying the presidential jet. Mm. <laughs> okay, I remember okay. now. I remember now. This we don't have no way to go. We have no way to go. Not like the people say, we have no way to go. We are crashing. We are crashing. And crash, we shall. I remember the story now of uh, Falano and uh, the um, convicts of NSAS. The government has said that they were going to pay 500 million naira as fine 
to release the NSAS convicts so that they can decongest the prisons. And Farano is saying they should review this. It's a laudable um, initiative, but why not just why not the minister just talks to the president and the governors to uh, to grant pardon to these people rather than the federal government paying 500 million naira to free the inmates or the convicts that they themselves put in prisons. There are certain things you don't need to respond to. 500 million naira to who? Who will account for it? Who no, something that they you can just grant pardon? Who will account? To who? It's another way to defraud the system and police are trying to drive for them. As simple as that. 500 to who? Just like Reggie said, why not just tell and they grant them pardon? Why are you talking about 500 million naira? They might just want to steal the zone and go away. It's as simple as that. Hmm. Because if the president wants to grant them pardon, the president can. President can. So why the 500 million men? Hmm. To who? We are coming again to another uh, uh, label under Buhari, such as Kayamotu. That's what is happening now. Hmm. Everybody wants to grab as much as they can grab. You remember that uh, employment saga? Hmm. Till today, it has not been clarified. How many jobs? Till tomorrow, it has not been clarified. The same person was cleared after apologizing because he did an appointment, was cleared by the Senate. That was how this man ran to the to Asso Villa to get clarification because some senators, some senators were opposed to it. He ran there, got back, he came back. That was how they cleared the man who collapsed. I think he had a, a what we call communication apprehension. He collapsed, went to the next thing we had, he had been cleared. Mm. He had been cleared. And yeah, I'm sick and tired of our country. <laughs> well, we, we, will, we will get better someday. Um, uh, there's an editorial on the same newspaper, The Guardian. That, 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 that is a fallen hope. <laughs> There's an editorial in The Guardian. We think palliative step up production, uh, productive engagement. That's an editorial on page 12 of um, The Guardian newspaper. I don't know what your comments are on that. They, they, it's on, on palliatives, and they are being asked, or the federal government is being asked to rethink palliatives and step up productive engagement. How really are we doing I, in the production I line? Before you came up. I talked of productive engagement. If you, if you remember, uh, Raji, Mm. If you remember, I talked about productive engagement when yeah. I was talking about the econ economy. Yes. Yes. You see, when you say palliatives, nothing really wrong. It's a stopgap measure. But the unfortunate part is, in this country, it is seen as one gravy train. One, you don't even have the palliatives. What they give to you are what can be given to the beds in the sky. That's what they give to you. And number two, they don't even give to you. If at all you see, they don't even give because most of them are stored in their warehouses like what happened to the senators at that time. Who has, but most of them, they collect the money, stored it, they said it was meant for his birthday. What of the number of persons that died before his birthday? He was using government's money to celebrate his birthday. He said so. It was meant for his birthday. Mm. So I don't even believe in the palliatives. Because if you look at the quality, somebody was on the sister station showing me, showing the world how many cups of rice for his family and once nobody's going to come again. And he said his neighbor did not even get. He was lucky to have. His neighbor did not get. And how many cups of rice for a family of how many? Maximum two days. Then you say you're giving Nigerian palliatives. No, now. First of all, who caused the hardship? You. You caused the hardship. But look at how much the senators and national assembly members were going home with as palliatives.
the cushion defect. We all had it. Then you give the poor man two cups of rice, five cups of rice, three cups of beans that are lasting for four, five days. The votes will run into trillions. When tomorrow they tell you about these palettes, they will tell you the trillions they spent on palettes. Nothing comes out of it. Mm. And we say we live in a country. There was a country. There is no country. There was a country. Well, we still have a Nigeria it's still standing. Uh, and uh, in the nation newspaper... You know, you, know it is, you know it is metaphorical. In, no. Yeah. In the nation newspaper, uh, the Minister of the Economy it seems to be very optimistic. Edun is saying Tinubu's homegrown plan, good to revive the economy. I don't know if you are aware of any I will not, homegrown I'm not plan. I'm going to do this because when I hear such things, it, I, I, get, I get infuriated, you know. What, okay, from the 1 May 29 to date, tell me one policy that has grown the economy, if it has not worse in the economy. What? I, I, what, I beg anybody. What? What? So what are we talking about? But you see, what is you also understand that as, as bad as Lucifer is, as painted in the Bible, he has his advocates, his apostles, he has his followers. So you shouldn't bother. People will come to say, and unfortunately, these apostles of the devil, in most cases, are seen to be richer and enjoy more. That is the truth about it. Tell me one policy. I just want one policy from May 29 to date. That is good. What? Just one. Are you talking of the scarcity? Are you talking of the uh, 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 employment uh, appointments? Are you talking? Oh, just mention one, 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 and just one. You can't mention. So, what policy is the actual man be that you're talking about? What policy? And there, there are certain things you know. You just, you just write them because you have to be on the new standard day. And when you consider who made the statement, you say, okay, let me just carry it because there is really nothing else to publish. That's the truth. Mm. And don't forget who owns the paper. Don't forget who owns the paper. Mm. What do you expect that paper to see? It's like a sister TV. You know what I'm talking about. What do you expect that TV to see? Anytime I've stopped watching that TV. And a lot of people want to watch that TV because, and you'll be sure that is the most patronized now. The content is poor. Hmm. Most Nigerians don't want to. Who are not affiliated don't want to watch the TV. Unlike before this time, where it is one of the uh, prime stations to watch. Uh, yes. No more. But full of lies and unnecessary defense. And do porous defense. So I'm not surprised. Hmm. I'm not surprised. Uh, when you talk about um, policy that has uh, changed the economy or have affected the economy positively, um, we, we also have a headline here in the Nation newspaper saying, emergency economic bill targets tax reform, job creation, others. There's a bill that has been sent to the National Assembly and is going to enjoy accelerated hearing because, according to them, it's going to what, what, target what the tax reforms. Yes. A bill that has been sent to the National Assembly will yes. enjoy accelerated hearing because it's going to target uh, uh, tax reforms and job creation and other things. Will, will, will. Mm. Let's wait and see. Okay. Let's wait and see. Will, 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 will. Mm. I will be in heaven. What time? And how? And how? Mm. So that's what that's. Okay. Uh, Lagos has been known as a state with the aquatic splendor, but some people have expressed concern about the reclamation of land. Finally, the Lagos holds illegal land reclamation 
in Ikoi Leki. I don't know if uh, uh, we should applaud the government, uh, but this is only Leki and Ikoi, or we should just uh, say that they should do more than this. Do you have an insight or you have uh, a yeah, comment? Well, yeah, thanks. Let us commend the government mm. and uh, maybe them to do more. Mm. Okay, the Daily Independent has these headlines. A competition slows among banks as tech flattens service. The writer on that story is Fintech's big gainers. Okay, uh, but, but the main headline is that competition has slowed down among banks as tech flattens service. We also have other um, uh, headlines. Supreme Court bench hits all-time low as uh, Justice D Dati Joe retires October 27. We also have Pandev Takas Gumi says any Nigerian can be FCT m minister. And also Serap asks court to stop reps from taking delivery of 360 SUVs worth 57.6 billion naira. Presidential election appeal, PDP optimistic of victory at Supreme Court. And finally, Israel strikes Gaza, Syria, West Bank as war against Hamas threatens to ignite other uh, fronts. Then again, agencies, experts, canvas removal of aviation power status from TSA. Say 40% deduction breaches ICAO recommendations and is strangulating. Okay, so Imo Guba, Ihediyoha, working for Hope Uzodima's re-election. That is what PDP chieftain is saying. And from Kogi comes a report that Kogi government raises the alarm over uh, assassination attempt on Governor Yaya Belu. Those are headlines on the Daily Independent. I don't know which one you would like to comment on first. Um, I, 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 I cannot ascertain the veracity or apocryphalness of their attempt on their Yaya Bello's life. I don't know. I'm very sorry to say this on national television, but uh, it's one man I can never trust. Why so? It's a duplicitous nature. High blood pressure of deceptive veterans and anemia of complete performance. Don't on air, it tells you all kinds of uh, dispenses all kinds of and when you go to your fact finding, it's empty. Hmm. It's empty. Now go to Kogi State and see what is happening in Kogi State. So, I, I, I don't know, it's not somebody. Uh, I, I, I take everything he says with a pinch of salt. That's one. I don't know how true it is. That's why I cannot ascertain, but it's somebody to score a political point that will even arrange that. Yeah, but it, mm -hmm. they, like you said, it's, like it's very, yeah. it's a controversial yeah. thing. Sorry? Yeah, um, the, the thing about this story is that another newspaper is saying, is quoting Yaya Bello himself, saying that attempt on his life, the news about attempt on his life is false. And I don't know where this comes from, because... Yeah, that's so good, so I just said it. I don't, I don't believe so, it. Let's leave that, because I said I cannot ascertain. You know, I started with that. Mm -hmm. I cannot ask him. So if he says it's false, that should be it. So let's not waste our time on that. Mm -hmm. And if you talk of the Supreme Court's uh, judgment, um, PDP is uh, sure of victory, Labour is sure of victory, APC is sure of victory. <laughs> now it's incumbent on the court to do justice. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll say. Mm -hmm. We all wait for justice and not judgment. Mm. We are not interested in judgment, we are interested in justice. Okay. So uh, we expect the Supreme Court to do justice. What will you really call me. justice? What would you call justice, justice? When you talk of justice, you are talking of merits, on the merits of the case. Mm. Justice is to the litigators, the litigants, and the general public. Mm. And don't forget what you have said. He said, must not only be done, but must be seen to have been manifestly done. Mm. And so, you know, when a lot of persons with poverty mentality come on air to say, uh, uh, the, the, the lawyer will understand this, first and foremost, you have litigation because two separate lawyers disagreed on an issue. So that's one. So don't come on air 
They say it's because this lawyer understood this. I don't know. Two lawyers were in court because they understood the law differently. That's number one. Number two, the judgment is not meant for the understanding of the lawyers alone. It is meant for public understanding. And that was why he said, he was said, it, is, it must not only be done, but we, but we seem to have been manifestly done. And in that very matter, he did not doubt the sincerity of the judges. The summary of the case, there was a motorcycle that, that accident and involving the car. They went to court. One of the clerk was not there, the deputy was there. I'm just trying to summarize it. Mm. The judges rose, went into a room, sat down, the clerk followed them. Who was supposed to be from the chambers of one of the plaintiffs, of one of the parties? Mm. Came out. He didn't even go in with the judges, but he left the country and they saw him walk through that same door the judges used. Not that he was seated with the judges. Came back, the judges gave their judgment and the other party appealed. And you had said, ah. The judges said, no. The judges said, no, I'm not doubting you. The judge said he was not even there with the judges. I'm not doubting you. They said he was not even part of the judge. He said, I'm not that justice you do. They said, I'm not doubting you. But how do you explain that to the public? They were not in there with you. So how would the public know that they had no input in that judgment? I'm just summarizing it. Yeah. The public know. I'm not doubting you. But what of the public? That was when he came up with that landmark judgment. Hmm. But this will be try. That's the matter. Okay. That is what called justice. Hmm. That so I'm just, I just summarized it. That is what you call justice. Hmm. Here they would have said the man uh, the post an affidavit, come out and speak if you actually if the man did not contribute to it, and you give a judgment or you say you uphold the judgment. You have done it. What of the common man? How do you convince the common man that there was no contribution from that man? Hmm. He was not there. The post and affidavits, the all kinds of nonsense. But he was said no. Was was the Chief Justice of England? He said no. How will others know? So go back. I'm not doubting you, but forget me. You have convinced me. The public will never be convinced. Mm. I don't know if you understand now. Yeah, yeah. You ask judgment and justice. I'm just trying to explain it. That is justice. So the litigants, the litigators, and the general public are satisfied. You see the point there? Yeah. They are satisfied. Yes. Yeah. Let me also tell you, meaning is not in the message. Get this straight, but in the message user. A word once spoken is past record. You can say a thing, it is subject to plural interpretations. And that's why they teach you. To choose the right words mm. from the word basket. So that that thing you say will be clearly understood by others. No ambiguity. You leave room for ambiguity, then you leave room for interpretations. Some might be right, some might be wrong. Mm. Your sorry will come late. And most times your sorry is not accepted. That's the problem we have. Okay, let we me call it effective communication. Let's look at the final headline, just the final one now, and then we'll wrap up. Federal governors or federal government governors forum signed deal on mining operations in Nigeria. We we heard some few days ago where the federal government was thinking about talking with uh, the state governors and finding a solution to the mining problems in Nigeria. And the question I was asking is, when you talk mining, uh, something like oil also for me, qualifies as mining. When you're talking about federal government and state, government, state governors collaborating to, do, uh, to come out with a solution to this mining and whatever they're going to do is going to be uh, from the two parties joining forces, will that also be for oil? 
Because if anything is on the exclusive list, everything else should be on the exclusive list. Is if it is. It I can has tell to you, I strongly, I strongly doubt if uh, they considered oil. So why not? Is it I, not, not I, I a natural resource? Because no, what I'm trying to you see that's 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 the that's the issue of effective communication I'm talking about. I don't think that they consider oil. That those I don't also think that they see they regard the issue of oil as mining. They will tell you exploration. I don't think it's, they would consider it. they are looking at <coughs> things like gold and so on. Because you know the case of gold in the north and the saga surrounding it, and up to the involvement of the CBN, and so on. So I think that's what they're looking at. I don't think they're actually looking at oil. But like Randy said, they should have considered it. But they believe that the oil issue is settled. So they're looking at other mining resources, other resources, to harness other resources. I don't think they, they, they're, they're considering oil. I might be wrong, but I sincerely don't think they're considering oil. So if they don't consider oil, will that be fair? Will that, will, will, because there are some states well, that only have oil, well, they don't have gold. Well, uh, that shouldn't be our problem. What I'm saying that is, the issue of oil has been addressed to some level. That is one. Number two, if they are going to harness our resources with a view to getting uh, uh, foreign reserves, foreign currencies, and so on. I don't have a problem. You see, my major thing that has to do with our economy. Anything that will boost the economy is okay. If we have the oil saga, we have the oil problem, too, we could address the oil problem. So if they're addressing oil problem separately and they're addressing this other one separately, provide the end result will be to boost our economy, it is okay. It is okay. Hmm. It's okay. That's nice. Okay, well, that's, that's the much we can take today on uh, of the press. So we've, we've had a marathon one today for on this uh, segment of the program. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Agaji. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with Opunabo Inkotaria, a, a public affairs analyst who talked with us from uh, Port Harcourt, the River State capital. We'll take a short break, and when we return, uh, we'll say our goodbyes. Stay with us.